All right, time to take all those absolute maxima and minima and put them to good use. We're gonna do some word problems. This process is a five-step process and can take some time. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have plenty of room in your notes and plenty of time on your hands. The first step is to draw an appropriate picture and label everything. If you're being asked to maximize the volume of a box, you're gonna to wanna to draw a picture of a box. If you're being asked to maximize a rectangular fence, draw a fence, that's a rectangle, and label. Step two is you're gonna write out the formula that you're maximizing or minimizing. For example, if you're being asked to find the maximum volume of a box, you're gonna to wanna to write out V equals LWH and prepare to use that formula. Step three is you're going to use that formula and make sure that formula only has one variable in it. So if you're finding length times width times height, find a way to turn length, width, and height so that they're all the same variable. This is the challenging part. You're gonna to have to find your possible values that you can use. For example, negative numbers usually won't work here, and sometimes there's maximum values that just don't make sense for a problem. Last but not least, you're gonna take some derivatives, find some critical points, and take endpoints and those critical points, plug them in and see which one gives you the maximum or minimum value when you plug it into the original equation. Here we go. We're going to start doing a few word problems. I'm going to take a while for this first one and write out every single step as we move along the way. Uh, so here's the problem. We have 120 yards of fencing. 120 yards of fencing. It's a rectangular. And I want to maximize the area. Okay. That's the plan. 120 yards, farmer has 120 yards of fencing. What are the dimensions of the rectangular fence that would maximize the area? Well, step one is we draw ourselves a picture. So the picture that I'm going to draw out is going to be a rectangle, <laughs> perfect. Uh, we got our length, we have our width, it doesn't matter which one's which, okay? Step two is we write out a formula that will maximize or minimize whatever it is we're trying to do. In this case, my job is to maximize the area, okay? Step three is I want everything in one variable. So I either want to deal with an L or a W. Well, right now I really can't do that. I mean, I have A equals L times W. There's really nothing I can do, except for the fact that the original problem told me that the perimeter is 120 yards. So the perimeter of any rectangle is two lengths plus two widths equals my perimeter. In this case, my perimeter is 120. So what I can do is I can take that fact and that equation right there and maybe solve this guy for either L or W and plug it in there so I have A equals L blah 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 W blah blah blah. So why don't I solve this for L? Okay, subtract two W from both sides. So I have two L equals 120 minus two W Divide both sides by two. And what that gives me is L equals 120 divided by two is 60 minus two divided by two is one W. So now the equation that I have in one variable is A 
equals, instead of L, I'm going to replace it with 60 minus W, and W is W. If I want, I can distribute that, which I'm going to do. That might come in handy and say A equals 6DW minus W squared. Okay, so again, what I did is the formula that I originally came up with in step two has two variables in it. That's no good. So what I needed to do is I needed to write out the same exact equation with only one variable. So usually with problems like these, when you're asked to maximize or minimize, you're given two pieces of information, or at least you're given one piece of information and you're asked to do something. And I could take that one piece of information to plug into the thing that I'm asked to do to come up with an equation with one variable. Okay, step four. Write out your possible intervals to make this possible. It's very redundant. Um, intervals. If I'm if I'm making a rectangle where my uh, maximum or my perimeter, sorry, is 120, I can't make like I, I could draw as many pictures as I want. Even if I were to make this the skinniest, 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 skinniest rectangle possible. My width can't be any more than 60 because if that was like 61, let's say, I'd have 61 and I'd have 61 and that could be like 0 .0001 yard or whatever and that would be no good. So my width has to be less than 60. I could also make a rectangle with the skinniest width possible. And so in this case, like I, if I choose to do a rectangle with a 0 0.0001 yards, I mean, that would be a waste of time. I still could, it would be greater than zero. So my intervals are going to be between zero and 60. Now we know very well that if I have a, you know, a picture where the width is 60, it's not going to work. If I have a, there's no, there's no area but we still have to write out the intervals because you never know, all right? Uh, step five, and this is where it gets interesting. Step five is use the techniques of the preceding section to obtain the maximum or minimum. So this is what I need to do. If you remember to find the maximum or minimum of something, and in this case, I care about the maximums, I need to find my critical points Okay. After I find my critical points, plug that into the original equation, original equation. And I also plug in the endpoints. In this case, my endpoints are going to be my intervals. So I will say intervals, plug in interval points. I just made that word up there. All right, so let's take a look at the equation that we came up with. This is the equation that we came up with. A equals 60W minus W squared. If I want to find the critical points, I would have to take the derivative of A, which would be, I don't know why I put a parenthesis there, which would be 60 minus 2W. I would set it equal to zero. And then solve. Subtract 60. Negative 60 equals negative 2w. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. Cross it out. 30 equals w. So my critical point is literally the guy right in between zero and and 60. Zero to 60 usually takes me about a few seconds because I drive a fast car, baby. All right, um, so these are the points that I need to plug in. I need to plug in zero, I need to plug in 30, and I need to plug in 60. So let's go ahead and plug those into the original equation. So I'll write it out like this. A of zero 
is going to be 60 times zero minus zero squared. Checking my math, that gets me zero. What that means is I, if I decided that my width should be zero, I would have no width and 60 inches or 60, what is this, yards of fencing by 60 yards of fencing and no width, and I would have an area of nothing. That would look like this guy, okay? I make the skinniest possible rectangle where basically the fences touch, and I'm not gonna have an area. Similarly, well, we'll get there. If I plug in 30, I get 60 times 30 minus 30 squared. Okay, 60 times 30 is 18 with two zeros after it. 30 times 30 is 900. That gives me 900. So my area in this case is 900 yards squared. So I have a, a square, basically. I have a width of 30, a width of 30, which means my lengths, that would give me a width of 30, and a width of 30 would give me 60 yards used. So I have to make that 30 and 30, which is 900 yards squared. I have a square. Oh, look at that. I wonder if that means anything. Probably not. So if I plug in 60, if I plug in 60, that's insinuating that my width is 60, my other width is 60, and I have nothing for length. So I'm basically taking a rectangle and I'm smushing the two fences together and I have nothing in between the two fences. So we know what's gonna happen. 60, plugging it into the original equation, 60 times 60 minus 60 squared, which means 60 times 60. It's gonna be 3,600 minus 3,600, so that's zero. I knew it. Okay, so my maximum value is this. Now, what did the original equation ask me to do? It asked me to, what are the dimensions of a rectangular fence that would maximize the area? The value that allowed me to maximize the area was W equals 30. So if my dimensions, if my dimensions uh, say that the width of 30 is gonna allow me to uh, maximize it, then I could say the width is 30 yards. How do I find the length? Well, up here, I wrote out that the length is 60 minus 30. 60 minus W is gonna be 60 minus 30. So the length is also 30 yards. So here's a fun fact. If my question is, take this rectangle and you need to, you have all four sides that you need to figure out and maximize the rectangle, it's always gonna be a square. If I give you all four sides of a rectangle, okay, and ask you to maximize it, it's always gonna be a square. Now, there always will be that case where, what if I don't give you all sides of the rectangle? Well, I guess we'll find out next. <laughs> So what if I have a pen or if I have a rectangle that I'm trying to maximize? And in this case, I'm given 450 feet of fencing. Okay. Uh, I want to maximize area. But what if in this case, I don't have all four sides or I don't need all four sides? In this case, I have some barn over here and I want to maximize the area using three sides of a rectangle. What do I do now? Well, let's find out. Step one was draw myself a picture, here it is. So I'll call you length, I'll call you width, and I'll call you length again. And this is not going to matter because it's the side of a barn, okay? Now I'm going to write out the fact that I'm maximizing area, which is length times width. That's what I have to maximize. Now, I can't just take the derivative of that because I have two variables going on here. I need to take this information here and here 
and use that information to create A equals blah, blah, blah with either just an L or just a W. So what I know is according to what I labeled, and there would be no different. It would be no different at all if I called that WW and that L. It wouldn't be any different at all. In this case, I have three sides that I care about. I have two lengths, I have one width, and all of that fencing adds up to 450. I'm gonna subtract 2L. In this case, I'm solving for W. And the reason why I'm solving for W is because it's easier. So I'm subtracting that. My width is going to be 450 minus two times the length. So I take that information, I plug it in there, and the variable, or rather the formula that I care about is length times width, which is now 450 minus 2L. In the last problem, it was really convenient when I did distributed properties, so I'm gonna do that again. A equals 450L minus 2L squared. Okay. Now what I have to do is I have to come up with the parameters. I have to come up with the intervals, the realistic things that I can plug in. Okay. Um, if I were to take this guy, this fence, and stretch it out, it's hard for you to see. If I were to take this fence and stretch it out as much as I can, bring it out as much as I can, so essentially I have no width, but I have all the length in the world, okay? The largest length that I can come up with, the largest length that I can come up with is gonna be half of that. Again, if I were to take this, stretch it out so that I have a fence touching another fence, I could have lengths that are half of that. So 225. So 225 is my maximum length. That has to be less than 225. If I were to take this width and smoosh it all the way up against the barn, I don't know how big my barn is. I have no clue. But let's just say that this barn is infinite. Okay, pretend you're from Lancaster and they have really big barns. Smush the width in, and if you smush the width in, that length is smaller, 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 and you can have a length of zero. Essentially what you're looking at, and it's, it's pointless, these two numbers are pointless because you'd have no area, but what I'm looking at is I'm looking at 450 feet of fence laying up against the barn, and if I did that, I would have no length. So these are my perimeters. Uh, my parameters. I can't go any a length any smaller than zero and any bigger than 225. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use those points and plug it into the original equation. What I also need that I haven't done yet is my critical points. So if I take the derivative of that guy right there, I get 450 minus 4L. Set it equal to zero. Subtract 450 from both sides. Divide by negative four. And I believe that gives me a length of positive 112.5. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, let me, uh oh, I'm gonna have to sneeze. I'm not typing anything into a computer or a calculator. Uh, if you hear something that sounds like typing, you are wrong. Um, I'm gonna sneeze now and, uh, oh yeah, you know what, I think I did that right. So here we go, great, good job me. So I have my critical points and I have my endpoints that I care about. I'm gonna plug all three of them into the original equation and see what I come up with. A of zero is going to give me 450 times zero minus two zero squared. Nothing. And again, what that makes sense because if I have a rectangle and the length is nothing, I'm not gonna have an area. If I plug in 112.5 into my area formula, my original formula, I have 450 times 112.5 minus two times 112.5. I think now is a good time for me to talk about um, life in general. Um, 
if if you're you know wondering what's the purpose of life what's the meaning of it you know why am i here that's a really great question you know i've i've done a lot of surveying and a lot of studying and um you know over over the course of my few years of life i have found that there is definitely one meaning to life and it's extremely important that you know that one meaning to life and i'll tell you later all right so this guy ended up being two five three one two point five pretty big pretty big area all right if i plug in 225 that's that guy right there i have 450 times 225 minus 2 times 225 squared okay 450 times 225 big number two times 225 squared is that same exact big number so it ended up that that guy right there gave us our maximum uh area so what was i supposed to do with this problem what are the dimensions of the pen that creates the maximum area the dimensions of the pen that gives us the maximum area are whenever what was that length whenever the length is 112.5 if the length is 120 uh 112.5 feet the width can be found by taking 450 minus two times the length. So moving over here, the width is 450 minus two times 112.5. Two times 112.5 is 225, and the width is going to be 225. So in the last problem, when I gave you all four sides of the fence, when I gave you all four sides of the fence, we ended up maximizing the rectangle and it ended up being a square. Not in this case. If I already give you a side, in this case, the barn, it's not a square. It's something where the length is literally half the width. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs>for us to be creative here uh an open box is to be made from an 8 by 15 inch piece of cardboard by cutting out squares of equal size from the four corners and bending up the sides all right this is where you will find out that there's a reason why i'm not an art major and why i'm a math major mainly it would help if i had a marker that worked let me see let's try this one yes all right so let's call you 15 Let's call you eight. What I have to do is I have to cut out corners that are squares of equal size from the corners. <laughs> I just I just became very redundant. Uh, I don't know how big the, the corners are. I don't know how big the squares are. So let's just call these missing pieces that we cut out X. Call them all X. X everywhere. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bend. So these are gone. Okay, gone. Boom, bang, I'm throwing them away. I don't need them anymore. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy, fold it up that way, that guy folded up that way, 
and it will end up being a shape that looks like this. Okay. So if I take this guy and fold it up, okay, and then shift it over, by folding it up, X is going to be the height. Again, try to visualize it. If I were to take this piece and fold it upward, X becomes my height. Now, if this piece right here were to represent the eight, okay, if I fold up that side and fold up that side, that side that I'm making bold right there matches up with that side right there. If I fold this up, I'm basically saying, excuse me, I'm basically saying the length of this guy is gonna be eight minus that X value and minus that other X value. In other words, eight minus two X's. Again, the length of this guy is gonna be the whole thing, which is eight minus X minus the other X, that is eight minus two X. Similarly, when I fold everything up, the length of this guy is gonna be 15 folded up and then folded up. So I'm folding up the height of X and folding up the other height of X, 15 minus two X. Okay, so the hardest part is drawing the picture. Once we draw the picture, we can get started, all right? Uh, I need to come up with a, what am I trying to do? Maximize the volume, largest volume. So I have volume is length times width times height, okay? I don't know what's my length, I don't know what my width is, I don't know what my height is, it doesn't really matter. But what I do know is instead of saying length and width and height, I can just say X and eight minus two X and 15 minus two X. So I will say X and eight minus two X and 15 minus two X. Okay, not a fan of this marker here. I have one more Sharpie that I can use. Uh, all right, I'm gonna take this, distribute X to both. So my volume is the same thing as eight X minus two X squared in parentheses. I still have 15 minus two X just hanging out. I can foil. When I foil, I get eight minus 15, which is 120. So 120 X, eight minus negative two X, I'm sorry, times negative two X, which is negative 16 X squared. Negative two X squared and positive 15 is negative 30x squared, and negative 2x squared and negative 2x is 4x cubed. I can combine these two guys right here. So I have 120x minus 46x squared uh, plus 4x cubed. Okay? So that's my volume. My volume of this situation right here is that guy. So what I'm going to do by maximizing, or if I'm going to maximize, I have to uh, find my critical points and I have to find the points that this is not allowed to be, or allowed to be, the end points, if you will. So designing this guy, the smallest possible X that I could use, the smallest possible square that I can use would be if X is zero. I mean, basically, if I cut the tiniest, if I were to cut the tiniest, 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 tiniest corner out of this, um, X could be zero or 0 0.11111 or 000001, but that's not what we're doing. Um, so we're going to say that the smallest possible square that we can cut is zero. The largest possible square we can cut is going to be, let me see, let's just make believe that I'm screwing up. If that guy is 15, then the largest or the smallest possible, the largest possible cut that I can make is seven and a half, which is actually not true. I have to go to the smallest side here. Like if I wanted to cut squares out of this, the largest square that I can cut is going to be along the shortest side. So if I go, if I were to cut here and make a square out of this, I'm going too far. So the largest square that I can cut is going to be half of that, which is four. So these are my endpoints that I have to worry about. Now I have to find my critical points. And as you remember, the way I find my critical points is by taking the derivative. Now, the nice thing about this problem compared to the last two is the last two I had to kind of find another piece of information and plug stuff in. Not here. I was able to make it work by doing all my X's and then plugging it in. 
I'm good. So none of that crazy, let's find another equation, plug it in to get the same variable. I already have that. I mean, I started out with length, width, and height, but I was able to turn those all into x's. So if I take the derivative, I get 120 minus 92x. I believe that's 92x. Yep. Plus uh, 12x squared. Set it equal to zero. Let me actually rearrange it so it looks like a quadratic. Uh, 12x squared, it is a quadratic, but I want to look, I want it to look like something that's factorable because I'm going to factor something out. In fact, right now I know I can bring out, I can't bring out a 12, but I can bring out a four. So I can bring a four out. By doing that, that leaves me with uh, 3x squared minus 23x plus 30. Now, it doesn't look like it, but I can factor this chunk out further. I have one of two options. I can come up with ways to factor this guy out, and this is factorable. It's not pretty, but you can factor it. Or I could do quadratic formula. I don't want to do quadratic formula because it's messy. I, at one point, I have to do b squared, which is that guy squared, and I don't know what that is off the top of my head. But it looks like I can factor it out by doing 3x minus 5x minus 6. If you're watching this and you're like, how in the world did he do that? Uh, what you can do if you really want to, you know, use your time this way is you can just look up solving quadratics with a leading coefficient or something like that. That's what you can search. All right. So I have three options that could be zero. I have four that could be equal to zero. I have three X minus five, which could be equal to zero. And I have X minus six, which could be equal to zero. Zero product property. Okay. That means nothing because there's no x. If I add five, then divide three. Add five, divide three is five over three. If I add six, I get six. Now I have two critical points, five thirds and uh, x equals six. However, last time I checked, I said that x had to be in between 0 and 4. So x equals 6 is not an option. Okay? So this guy is uh, 1 and 2 thirds. I can plug that in. I can make it work. But, uh, you know, uh, this guy I can't. So what I do is I take this and I plug it into my original v formula so I can use this guy right here. I'll start out with 0. v of 0 is equal to 120 times zero minus 46 times zero squared plus four zero cubed. A whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of nothing, okay? This is gonna be the part where um, I'm gonna want a calculator, which I don't have on me. One of those things. Uh, all right. Um, so I'm going to have 120 times 5 thirds minus 46 times 5 thirds squared plus 4 times 5 thirds cubed. All right. Let's see. Uh, mm hmm. While I do this, I'm sure you're all getting out your calculators and doing the same thing. I trust that you are. I trust that you are. All right. uh, la, 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 Type it away. Still typing away. Still typing away. Let's see what I got. 
got 90 something. 90.7 so I'll call it 90.74 alright fun now this is what I'm not going to do after doing that I'm not about to spend forever minutes uh, writing this out plugging it in I know what's going to happen We've done so many of these problems where I know exactly what's going to happen. If I have four, basically I'm taking my piece of paper and folding it, or in this case a box, folding it in half and saying, look at this piece of paper that's completely folded in half. What's the volume? I already know the answer. It's going to be zero. So, the original question asked us to, what size should the squares be to obtain the largest volume? It's this guy right here. So the squares, what were we doing? Feet, inches, inches. The squares are going to be five and one third inch by five and one third inch. Okay? Fun, 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 fun. One more. Alright kids, last but not least, I have a problem involving buses. The monthly net profit of millions of dollars of a company that manufactures buses is given by that function right there. Okay. B of X equals blah de blah de blah de blah. X is the number of buses manufactured in a month. Before I get started, I need to figure out the least amount of buses I can sell. Let me see. Zero. I can sell nothing. I wonder if I make money. My guess is probably not. If you're wondering, well, how do we find the largest amount of buses? I mean, can't you make as many buses as you want? Last time I checked, uh, you're not God and you may, can't make a billion buses. So we need to find out the maximum buses that we can make. If we graph these equa that equation rather right here, the graph looks something like this, okay? And you can just go to Wolfram Alpha. You can even go, at this point now, you can type into Google uh, graph Y equals that, and it will give you an actual graph. The graph that it'll give you will look like this. Okay. Now over here means nothing. Why? Because those are negatives and I can't sell negative buses. That's zero, zero. Okay. What I need to know is, see, it goes up here. That's gonna be my maximum. Whatever that number is, is gonna be my maximum. That's actually what I'm looking for in this whole problem. So if I want to find the, uh, the most buses I can sell, that will be that guy, okay? That number right there. If you're using a graphing calculator and if you're tracing or if you're using uh, a TI-84+, plus, you can find out the zero. This number right here, is x equals about 34 and a half. Now I can't make 34 and a half buses, but I can make 34. So the largest number that I can use is 34. The smallest number that I can use is zero. Okay, so these are my endpoints. Endpoint, endpoint. What I need now is my critical points. So I take the derivative. That becomes 1.2. This is chain rule. Bring down the three. Keep the inside. Don't forget about that too. And multiply by everything, multiply everything by the derivative of the inside, which is 0 0.1. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it equal to zero, 1.2 minus 0.1 times 3 is 0.3, and I have 0.1x squared. Okay? This is going to be fun. You ready for some fun? I'm ready for some fun. I have to get x all by itself. I'm not even close to it. So I have... I can subtract 1.2 from both sides. And 
negative 1.2, I have negative 0.3, 0 0.1x squared. I can divide everything by negative 0.3. How incredibly convenient. I mean, it makes sense. If regular 12 is divided by 3 is 4, then 1.2 divided by 0.3 is 4. Uh, and the fact that we get 4 is incredibly convenient because in order to get rid of that squared, I have to square root both sides. Now, don't forget, when you square root both sides, you need the plus or the minus. So I have a positive or negative 2 is equal to 0.1x. Okay, remember from fifth grade, you would read that out as one-tenth. So if I want to get rid of that one-tenth, I'm going to multiply everything by ten. Okay? And what that gives me is positive or negative 20 is equal to x. Now, common sense would tell me that if this is a word problem and if I'm to solve or if I'm to find out how many buses I should sell to maximize profit, what I don't need is the negative because you can't sell negative 20 buses. So X is gonna equal 20, okay? Not negative 20, because you know, can't sell negative buses. Let's plug stuff in. Uh, B of zero is gonna be 1.2 times zero minus 0 0.1 times zero cubed. Whole thing gives you zero. If I plug in 20, that's going to be 1.2 times 20 minus 0 0.1 times 20 cubed. So let's quick type that in our calculator. Uh, 1.2. Uh, uh, 16. Now remember what the original problem said. That's not 16, okay? That's 16 million dollars? Million dollars. A lot of money. If I plug in... Uh, 34, I'm going to get 1.2 times 34 minus 0 0.1 times 34 to the third power. My guess, and I'm gonna, I am going to type it in just because I'm a math teacher, is I'm going to get something a little bit higher than zero. Remember, this guy is 34.5. I can't use 34.5 because I can't make 34 and a half buses, but I can make 34. And so 34 would live like right here. So maybe I can make a little bit of money. So let's type in 34. So I do make some money, but not a whole lot. So the original problem, so if I'm maximizing here, which I am, you're no good, you're definitely no good. So one is determine the amount of buses needed to be manufactured and in each month in order to maximize profit. The answer is 20 buses. And part two says calculate the profit earned by producing this quantity of buses in one month. Well, if I make 20 buses, I make $16 million. Okay? Okay. Well, that ends that. Bye.